Hello and welcome to the channel. So today I have a, uh, a sort of a build video for you. As you can see, these are parts of a lightsaber that has been sent to me uh, from a YouTube channel called Sems Nerd. Um, and basically he said that he wasn't very happy with this saber that he's been given. He didn't like it at all. And he was hoping uh, rather than just throw it away, or just give it away he wanted me to see, he wanted to send it to me to see if i could do something with the design see if i could make the design better uh, and make it a lightsaber that he would like so um i thought it was an interesting challenge um he did say that the way that the blade is held in place is horrific and i have to admit it really is the worst way i've seen to hold a blade in place um, but I, I took on the challenge and he sent me the lightsaber, so uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to try and take this lightsaber and make it something a little better. Oh yes. So I'm in the workshop and I've got the saber here. I'm just trying to figure out what do I what do I want to do with this saber. There's the little part that holds the blade in place. Um, and the, the the strange thing about this saber, it just these parts unscrew and they just fall off, and uh, it's it's not a particularly great lightsaber. If if you have one of these and you like it, fair enough. But for me, I wasn't a fan, uh, and Sem's nerd really, really didn't like this hilt. So I've got rid of the gold bits because I don't I don't think I'm going to use those. Um, I'm just having a bit of a play around to see is there a configuration of the existing parts that would work to make this better and I, I, I really struggled with this uh, it, it, there, there was just very little I could keep from the existing um, as you see here the, the gold ring it just falls around so I couldn't even put a gold ring there which would have been nice to have that gold ring uh, so all the gold rings are, are gone uh, the gold sections uh, are gone as well and uh, I'm, I'm left with basically just the raw handle so the part that holds the uh, battery the switches and the emitter that's that's pretty much all I think I can use for this lightsaber which is pretty bad uh, that's a good 15-20% of its core detail gone. So uh, this uh, this set piece this would just not come off at all. It was an absolute nightmare. So I went off there, and I actually actually put I actually had to put this in a vice to uh, to remove that piece. It was it wasn't very good. So at this point. I'm, I'm getting an idea of what I'm wanting to do. Um, I'm thinking that I've got to, the first thing I'm gonna to have to do is completely change this emitter. It's, it's not good, it's huge. So I move over to the lathe and what you're gonna see me do now is, uh, now it's in place on the lathe, I'm actually going to uh, cut out or bore out a large section uh, where the blade will go now the the emitter has been set perfectly for a one inch blade uh, but the emitter section is very very small I think it was about an inch and a bit uh, and I, I really wanted to increase the the length of the emitter housing so it could hold the blade more and have a better a better grasp of the blade so my idea was I'm going to bore this out um, once I've bought it out to uh, the the right diameter or internal diameter, I'm going to fit a new piece. Um, now, it, one thing I, I did notice uh, when I was working on the lathe, cutting this metal, the the metal is so so soft. Uh, it's it's really really delicate metal. Now. A lot of the mass-produced sabers uh, use uh, a metal that is very, very easy to cut. So, if you if you imagine you're in a, a, a company that mass-produces lightsaber handles, and 
effectively almost every single handle is going to come off a uh, an automated lathe automated mill or cnc machine um you you don't want to have really really strong metal on there the the stronger the metal the more it's going to wear down the cutting edge or the uh, cutting edge or the the bits of the the tools that you're going to use um so you don't want to be able to cut uh 50 lightsaber hilts and then have to replace those cutting tools uh, every 25 to 30 or 50 uh, hilts that you've used them on so when you're mass producing uh, or cnc items you would go with a, a good metal uh, absolutely a good metal but a metal that is very adapt uh, to going on a lathe on a cnc machine so it's a very soft metal uh, a lot of the mass-produced hilts will use this sort of metal um, and it's very very light so uh, and very easy to cut so you'll see me here I'm cutting a uh, the emitter housing for in increasing the length of the emitter uh, this is two mil thick uh, aluminium or two mil wall and uh, it's it's very very strong Normally, I use a 1.6mm, um, but on this I was going with 2mm because I wanted it to keep its strength. Uh, I'm just getting rid of all the uh, sharp edges. Um, and I was cutting it down at this point to then go back to the lathe here, so I can see how close am I for that internal diameter of the emitter to actually be able to accept this new part that I've just cut. Uh, turned out it, I had to go quite a lot to um, to actually uh, cut this out it, it was not uh, as quick and easy as I thought it was going to be uh, and you'll see I, I took off a huge amount of material um, and it took a very very long time but again the my lathe because I've used my lathe for so long um, you, you get a feeling of how it likes to work with materials you get you get to know what what it likes to do so how much material it wants to take off each pass uh, and with this this metal I could take off nearly double the amount I would normally take off uh, off the metal that I would do so it was it was very enjoyable to to work on such easy metal uh, compared to what my aluminium is um, I think uh, my the, the the main body of aluminium that I use is usually a, a 16 gauge, which means a 1.6 mil wall, um, and that's very strong, uh, and it's very very good aluminium. Uh, it does take quite a long time for me to to actually get through all this material. I I. Uh, I thought it wouldn't take very long because my thinking was it's a 25 inch blade that goes into this this section and if it's a 25 inch blade and the new emitter housing I'm going to put in is 28 mil 28 mil I only have to take off 1.5 but it just it just did not go that way it it did not like my thinking I think I took off easily more than 1.5 mil in uh, in the, in the wall, but I did do a very good job. You can just see at the very base where the, uh, right inside how much metal has been taken off by myself. As I get closer to the required internal diameter for the new part you'll see that I'll, I'll start testing and trying to fit the new part a lot more just so I can get as close a fit as I possibly could. Uh, one thing that was very frustrating was the angled emitter aspect. It only allowed me to go so far inside um, the emitter. I would have liked to have gone, a, I would have liked to have gone much further um, but it actually worked out for the best. Uh, again, I, I will be putting, I, I do use quite a lot of machining oil 
um, if if I don't I, I I don't know if this is true, uh, but at high speeds and the heat generated between the cutting edge and the part, um, it can possibly it could possibly fuse together. So as you saw there, I think. Yep, so I actually managed to get that part fitted inside, so the internal diameter of that emitter now accepts this new part that I've made. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is, because of the actual shape and the size or the length of this part, uh, it wouldn't allow me to go on the... Um, it wouldn't allow me to go on the uh, my, uh, meter saw, uh, which I, was my preferred option to cut this section off because my thinking is I want to cut this section off and then do a new styled emitter but for me to cut this section off I had to do it on the lathe now I have got the tool or the bit on for the lathe that will cut through and cut off parts of metal uh, but my lathe absolutely hates that tool so it will not use it at all so what that means is I have to uh, effectively cut a big groove in the metal and work my way through, uh, work my way into the metal at an angle, uh, making a, a groove larger and larger. Um, the, the, the thickness of this metal is huge. Um, I, I don't know if that's because the metal is very soft, um, that they've made the walls of the metal much bigger than I would do to accommodate that to, to take into accommodation the strength aspect um, but it was a it was a lot of work to to cut through this uh, and I think it should be almost done hopefully um, you may have noticed uh, there was no me standing up at the beginning of this video um, I'm trying to do a different style of build video so there's some nice background music uh, and I get to talk to you through the the whole process on uh, on what I'm doing and why I'm doing it um, most probably it will give you a video which you can watch that's more detailed and you have more of an idea to why rather than me stopping over and over again um, and there we are that that part's popped off now I'm just going to give it a quick sand down, just to make sure there's no sharp edges. Uh, but yeah, I uh, I just wanted to do a different style of video. If if you prefer this style of video, then uh, you know please put in the comments. Let me know. Do you want more videos this uh, in this style, or would you like more videos in my uh, previous styles where I actually stop and talk to you and go through my plans and thinking that way? Uh, so now that part was all sorted out uh, to that stage. I was just giving it a good clean off, getting rid of all the oil the new emitter section fits in uh, and now that blade has got nearly double the amount of um, uh, double the amount of area that it can hold on to a blade so my thinking was to try and put some just quite easily put some bits and some detailing into this emitter uh, I was maybe slightly ambitious with the depth when I came to do this cut um, as you see, I've now adjusted that and uh, gone for a much shallower cut there. It did actually catch uh, something I didn't take into consideration. The the bit that's been cut through now is much wider than the the, the bottom end, so um, it did just jolt ever so slightly. Um, so I should have really. Uh, Put some, as you see here, I'm just putting some extra supports in there at the base just to try and hold it all much firm, much more firmly. Even though this metal is a, a lot softer than what I normally use, uh, it did still take quite a lot of effort to get through this emitter. But the, the emitter section is just so, so thick. Um, you can actually see the threads for where the uh, old emitter section would uh, fit inside of it. Um, 
and it was such a bizarre way of of uh, locking a blade in place. So you'd you'd put a, you, you couldn't. It, it, it's such a weird way of doing it. There's no way to easily fit a blade in that lightsaber hilt before I do this. Uh, you'd have to slide the gold part onto the blade, lock it in place, and then slide the blade inside the emitter, and then hope that the blade, the gold part, will fit to the the threads, and you can thread it in place. It was, it was a horrible design. Uh, it's something Sems also said that he absolutely hated the way that you lock a blade in place. He, he despised it, which is one reason why uh, my main goal was to completely remove the um, yeah the the actual locking mechanism for the for the blade and actually design a new one from scratch. Now I'm cutting these sections into the emitter. I, I didn't really have any specific plan. Uh, I wanted it to look a bit like a castle turret, uh, was my original thinking. Um, but the thickness of the metal, uh, and it's only a small hand mill that I have, and bless it, the, the thing gets very hot after a short time, and it can only manage to do so much per job, or per run. Um, and by the time I'd finished doing the, the cutout sections I wanted to on this emitter, it, it was just getting too hot, and uh, I had to let it cool down. So uh, because of that, it, it kind of changed my um, my plan for the emitter. Uh, I only had a, I only had a short, small window in which to get this done. Uh, so I only had about three days uh, to get all this filmed and. Uh, get it all put together. Um, just so you know, if you want to, uh, once this was all finished, uh, I did send it back to Sems. Uh, and if you want to see his reaction as he, he's doing a, a blind unboxing, so he has no idea what this hilt looks like. He has never seen it before. He's going to literally open it up on camera. Uh, if you want to see his reaction and his thoughts, uh, there will be a link in this video. Uh, so that you can go and check out his video review and or his reaction to this. So I got to, I was going to do four of those, but in the end I did three. Uh, my mill was just getting far too hot. But it does look, in in my mind, it does look better. So the next thing was this uh, emitter that I wanted to get done, and I wanted to uh, because I'd done that one section. Well, I hadn't gone all the way down like those other three. Uh, I wanted to get that finished off and tied it up, so I thought I could always uh, bridge um, or make like um, oh, uh, like a prong on there. Um, so this is a meter sign. It's most probably the scariest machine I have. You'll see me in my videos. I put a block of wood on there, and I'm holding that block of wood in place. Uh, and I'm holding that piece at an angle. It is, uh, and it won't move. It is so, uh, so unbelievably um, held in place by me doing that. It, it never moves, so it's very safe. Uh, it's actually safer than the part that comes with the uh, the machine itself. So I'm going back to the letter mill, and I'm going to just try and angle this section so it kind of all blends in and it all works together uh, it's not just sticking out at the bottom so again I'm I'm being very very ambitious with how much I'm taking off per pass uh, I do uh, I do like to try and get things done in one big go but uh, sometimes the mill just I mean I'm, I am asking a lot of the mill bit there so uh, yeah I, I I went to a lighter level and I just worked my way through to reduce it down to the shape and size that I wanted, which is most probably what I should have done in the beginning, but you can't blame a guy for trying. To be honest, I didn't particularly want to 
use the mill again because it was still quite hot. Um, but yeah, I, I had no choice. I needed to do it. Uh, this was the last thing that I did on this particular day because uh, it had got quite late. So after I'd finished with this uh, and with the mill basically telling me that it hates me in its own special way, uh, I actually called it a day. Um, and then uh, we'll jump to the next day uh, where I actually finish this part off and uh, start making sure all the edges are nice and smooth. Trying to make my own lightsaber design from scratch is a lot easier than having to modify somebody else's design, I found. Because when you're modifying or changing somebody else's design, you're constrained to what they have already done and what you've got to work from. Whereas doing it yourself, when it's just a blank canvas, is a lot easier. So I'm just making sure everything lines up nicely and it's all looking and it all looks okay uh, and I'm very happy with that so the next thing I'm going to do is just start marking up all the holes to rivet things in place and and that sort of thing as well. Um, if there's anybody out there thinking oh wow uh, I might drop four sabers an email asking say look I've got a lightsaber here that I don't like can I modify it it's not something I do so it's there's no there'd be no point um, emailing me uh, the reason why it's not something I do is because uh, I, I don't do custom installs I don't do works on other people's sabers uh, due to liability reasons it's something I did when I first started and it caused me no end of trouble um, so it's not something that I would do. The only reason I'm doing this uh, is literally, uh, Sem said to me, he doesn't care what I do to it. I can literally do anything I want to this hilt because um, he hated it that much. Anything is better than what it was. So that's the only reason why I took up the challenge. Um, I don't know if he said, I don't know what he's going to do with the saber. He said he may uh, keep it. Um, uh, he said he might give it away, I don't know, but uh, I think the the end result would be great if he had a uh, Xenopixel V3 uh, chassis installed on it, or even a Profi would look great on this hill. Uh, I think he should really look into doing that. So, we've got, just been doing all the, the basic stuff just to get these things so I can uh, get them fixed in place <laughs> sometimes it's not the easiest of fits it was a little bit of a pain because it was fractionally out of alignment by about one one mil out of alignment maybe half a mil and it was just caused me a little bit of trouble which was a bit of a pain I managed to get it fixed in the end without any problems. So it's, it wasn't a huge issue, it's just, it just held me back in my progress. And there you are, riveting it in place so it's nice and firm. And then lining up the next piece so that I can uh, get that put in as well as you see here so I'm just going to use the uh, drill I'm just going to, uh, I've fluffed it up there a bit but there it's nice and level now I'm, off camera what I'm doing now is actually using a hole punch to make sure the holes in the right place and it's all ready for the drill bit The, I must say, the emitter was very different to what I thought originally it was going to be, but I must admit, I do very much like the outcome of the emitter. 
uh, and this emitter took a very long time to work on. This took most of the day to, to do. Just because it was so very, very fiddly. Um, while I'm doing this, I think it'd only be prudent for me to say if you're enjoying this video, uh, you know, comments are always welcome. Um, and if you would like to give the video a like and a thumbs up, it does really help the channel. Um, I do love reading the comments and uh, I do like, I will always try and reply to comments on my videos. So you've just seen me use a file there. I'm just getting rid of any, uh, uh, any excess metal inside the uh, emitter, which will stop the blade. And what I'm doing there is actually there's little parts of the rivet sometimes a lot more tricky than than normal to get out but I get uh, I use these little bits to take those out and then I can file out those those sections so it's uh, nice and smooth and ready for the blade <laughs> unfortunately I had to use that collar I had no choice at all I couldn't get rid of it and it was a real pain um, in the end I decided to go with the uh, with the setup like that, so and I was very happy with it. Um, one thing I, I thought would make a big difference to the design would be actually to take quite a lot of the length off the hilt. Um, this metal is stupidly thick. Again, it's such it's such soft metal. Um, it seems like they've massively over-engineered the wall thickness throughout to accommodate the, the very soft metal that's used on this. So it, it took quite a lot of effort to cut through just because it was such a thick piece of uh, thick piece of metal. I think the walls must have been at least five millimeters thick. Very, very thick walls. You can see that my hand uh, top left, uh, I am waiting for this to finish Un until that blade stops spinning. I don't move, I don't touch anything. Just look, it, it might be seven millimeters thick. It was very, very thick, those walls. Uh, just getting rid of, uh, again, sanding off the ends, making sure that they're nice and soft and it's not going to cut anybody in the safe. Uh, I will also try and make sure that there's no sharp edges to anything I do. And uh, that's the end of the day for me there, so uh, I come back in after the the sanding is the last thing that I did on this day. So I come back in the next day to continue with the, the hilt. And one thing that I thought would make a big difference to the handle would be to give it some really, give it a really good grip. Um, so I have to line it up and make sure that it's spinning uh, perfectly level. If it's not level, then it could uh, catch, could fall out, fly out, um, or it just won't cut properly. And here I go. So I'm just taking out one of the things is because this metal is so thick it allows me to do really nice really deep grooves for the grips which is not something I, I tend to normally get uh, get a chance to do um, but I, I definitely wanted to have a really good beefy grooved firm grip I'm really glad that I, uh, I went with the choice And then I just work my way down the hill. But like I'm saying, um, you know, any if you are enjoying this, uh, a thumbs up, uh, a like, you know, that that is massively appreciated. Um, it costs nothing to subscribe to the channel, so it would be great to have have you subscribe if you are enjoying this content. I am bringing out more content, and like I've said previously in the video, if you prefer this style of video where I. Uh, just do the whole video of me building and talk over it. Uh, please let me know. Please put a comment in the uh, in the video 
so that I can see which you prefer. Um, or if you prefer the Adam Savage type of approach where it's just me uh, stopping and talking to you and letting you know how things are going, um, then I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. But it's entirely up to you. I, I can do either version. I really don't mind which one it is I do. But I'm so glad I put these grips in. Really, really nice, chunky, beefy grips. Uh, pretty much this entire video has been speeded up by about 200, 300 times speed. Uh, otherwise it'd be very, very long. Um, I think it's about an hour, hour and a half long before I speeded up the time to two to three hundred times the speed. Um, so there we are, we've got the, the look of the hilt that I'm, I'm wanting, which is great. Um, the the handle part I've just done is actually got anodized. It's, it's either anodized or it's powder coated. I think it's powder coated paint on there. And uh, one thing that I was going to do is I'm going to make this whole lightsaber black. And I thought I'm just scratching the surface now, so the paint adheres better to it. Um, and I thought uh, having the that section black already would be fine, but. It actually worked out against my better judgment. Uh, I had to redo the whole saber three or four times in regards to the paint job because um, it it just would not blend at all. Uh, and in uh, the last thing I had to do was actually remove all the uh, powder coated black from that section you can see sat on the bench, just because it just kept being an absolute pain. Uh, to be honest, out of all the weathering jobs I've done on lightsabers, this is most probably, or this has been the most troublesome weathering paint job I've ever actually done on a saber. Hey guys, right, so uh, you saw me get everything done. I went off and I spray, uh, I, I painted the whole thing uh, black. Uh, then I realised I hadn't tapped the the emitter because I'm a genius. So then I went back and I tapped the emitter so it, you could put a locking nut in it or a tension screw, whatever you want to call it. I uh, did that and it messed up all the paint job. So I was like, great, okay. So then I tried taking getting rid of all the paint, uh, sanding it off, and it actually looked really good. So then I spent a number of times uh, trying to do the same effect on the, the main grip at the bottom. Uh, but because it was uh, it had powder coating, in the end I had to take off all the powder coating. Uh, so it's just bare metal and do it all from scratch again. It was an absolute pain. I did it, I think I took like five attempts to finally get to the end. So you ready? Oh, it's so good this. Here it is. How nice is that? I've not done a weathering job like this before. I'm multi-skilled, you know. I do many different things. But it's all over. It just looks old. It looks well. It, it just looks great. This is something a Jedi's had when he started as a Padawan. And he's 60, 70 years old. He's been using it for most of his life. Heavily using it all the time, training with it, using it to duel with, uh, practicing, you know, all those things. It is just so, so good. And I hope Sems is going to really like this, because I'll tell you what, I don't particularly want to give this back to him now, because uh, it's lost some of the weight from what it was previously. Obviously we had these aluminium -y bits, and don't forget we had these gold sections and stuff. Um, but the weight's way better. The weight feels really good now. Um, I don't know what the balance is on this. I've still got a lot of weight here. Uh, also, we've increased the length of the emitter. So before, the emitter was like that. Um, and that's where the locking nut was. So the locking nut was right here. Uh, we've now increased it all the way up there, and we've got a locking nut right there. So... It's a big change. This thing is nothing like, nothing like what was sent to me. 
by Sems. Um, and I can't wait to see his reaction when he gets this. Because I'll tell you what, this is awesome. It's just a shame that the soundboard inside is just so bad. It is a terrible soundboard. Um, but, oh shit, I don't want to tie it. No, do, do I want to tie it? Yeah, I want to tie it. We, right, it's nice and... But yeah, that is so good. Uh, so, I've not uploaded... I've uploaded this video now, just so you know. I've uploaded this video now that you're watching. Um, and Sems has just uploaded his video of him getting it. So if you want to see his reaction straight away, I'm, I'll put a link down below and you can go and check out his channel and you can check out what he thought of this Sabre as soon as he gets it. Um, because I'm not going to put this up until he's put his video up. But yeah, don't forget guys, please let me know what you think uh, I should do in the video. Should I do it my normal way that I have done in the past? Or should I do it this way where I talked over the whole process uh, with a bit of music and that sort of thing? And also, please check out Sam's Nerd. And finally, we're nearly at a thousand subscribers. I'm giving away that amazing Mandalorian helmet at a thousand subscribers. So please, 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 please let your friends know. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And you could be in a chance with running it because anyone that has subscribed has a chance of winning that Mandalorian helmet. And also, I think a watch will be going out, or a watch will have just gone out, or will be going out as we've just hit 800, and I'll be giving another, a watch, another watch away at 850 and 900. So thank you so much. Thank you so, so, so much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the channel, I hope you enjoyed the content, I hope you enjoyed me. I will see you all again in the near future. Peace.